for today, I'm going to be talking to you about seven key steps that we've identified that can help to modernize an out of home business, your out of home business. Now, some of these steps might sound a bit obvious to some of you, and some of them may seem a little irrelevant or inappropriate at the current moment. But there's seven general steps going by the range of countries and, and the diversity of the organizations that we're reaching out to. Maybe not everyone will have thought of all of these. Some of them might sound a little bit like a sales pitch. Honestly, that's not the intention of today's webinar. So I apologize in advance if anything comes across a little salesy. But before we get into it, a little bit about me. Some of you may know of me already. Uh, my name's Christian Moody. I'm based in London. I'm the Director of Implementation EMEA here at Broadsign. I have spent 10 years working at JC Deco, where I managed systems development and support, looking at uh, all areas of the business there, working with the corporate departments in France and so on. And after that, I moved to Ayuda Media Systems, where I was responsible for onboarding and supporting customers across EMEA. So again, I've worked with all departments across all areas of the businesses. I think that's given me a great a uh, great grounding and a good experience in terms of out of home operations. And then since the acquisition of IUDA by Broadsign last year, I've become more involved with Broadsign products and Broadsign customers, bringing my experience to a much wider customer base. So that's a little bit about the presentation, a little bit about me. And so let's get into it. So to start with pre coronavirus, because obviously we're in a different time now. Pre-coronavirus, we were looking at a pretty rosy picture in out of home. We were seeing growth annually on average roughly 4% every year. That was expected to go on till 2023. Out of home itself was getting a lot of attention from some of the biggest brands in the world. Example, we talked already about Netflix, but Netflix bought the LA based Regency billboards for exactly that purpose. They wanted to get to outdoor advertising and outdoor audiences. And in fact, out of home was the only traditional media category that was actually growing. But then we come to now. So globally, we're looking at lockdown. We're looking at social distancing measures and everyone staying indoors. So audiences are down. Now, while this is all absolutely necessary and obviously uh, the cost of life is more important than the cost of advertising, but it's led to hard times for out of home businesses around the world. Now, obviously, we're all unsure how long this is going to last and how long it's going to take us to get back to business as usual. But we will. And once we are climbing back, I don't think and we don't think at Broadsign that we should settle for business as it was before. We think it should be better than that. So what can we do? What's next? Well, we think that our industry should use this time to learn, to adapt and to prepare to grow. We can invest in working smarter and more efficiently, and you can set yourselves up for long term success. Obviously, collaboration and partnerships are always critical to driving out of home growth. But if being isolated has taught us one thing, it's how much we really do depend on others. But where can you start? Well, so as per the topic of today's webinar, we've identified a few key areas that you can pay special attention to. Now, they're not listed in any particular order, but they are all valuable. And just as a quick note throughout the presentation, you can send in your questions using the Q&A feature on Zoom, and we'll try to get to some of those in the Q&A period at the end. OK, so from the seven steps, step number one. Get your traditional out of home delivery activities in sync. So I don't think that people outside the industry and I don't think a lot of people inside the industry really understand how hard this part is to get right, because you have to keep track of so many moving parts. It's so involved and time is increasingly under pressure from last minute sales, last minute decisions, and so on. And of course, there's the process itself, coming from the sale where there's a negotiation of a deal, 
having the contract signed, receiving the designs, checking and approving those designs, possibly with the landlord or the, or the land, landowner. Then you have to get designs to printers with the correct specifications. And of course, get the printed media dispatched to your warehouses and to field teams for posting. And all along, you want to track at what stage every project is at, at all times. And all of this is a lot of work. To make matters worse, businesses are still trying to do it without the right tools for the job. Now, personally, I do like Microsoft Excel. I use it a lot. Google Sheets are great for collaboration, but we have to be honest, spreadsheets are not the solution for running any business, let alone an out of home business. And yet still so many businesses try to track every step of every project with spreadsheets. And at the very best, it's inefficient. It can involve a lot of manual data entry across multiple spreadsheets by multiple people to keep everything in line. But at worst, it can lead to errors when data is not entered or tracked properly. And if you deliver the wrong campaign or you're late in delivering a campaign, or even if you manage to catch and fix a mistake later on in the delivery process, it's all wasted time and money. And of course, all of this complexity and the problems that it causes get compounded the more locations and the more distance you have between your locations and everything that you're managing. So we have the biggest piece of advice for traditional out of home businesses is this. The solution is to invest in a software platform designed for out of home. And I know it probably sounds biased coming from Broadsign and maybe it is a little, but obviously we really believe that good out of home software is necessary for keeping businesses moving. I'm going to make uh, I'm going to refrain from making any specific recommendations about any particular software so as not to come across salesy. What I want to do is point out some features that I think are useful, if not essential. So these are, these are, these are recommendations of features you can find in many, many software platforms. So then you'll know what to look for when you're shopping around. So really, what should be on your list? Well, whatever you choose, it needs to make, you need to make sure that it reduces your workload by centralizing data and optimizing or even better automating repetitive tasks. If there's one thing I've learned through all of my years, it's that, it's that optimized, centralized and integrated platforms save you so much time and effort. Then you don't have to make updates across numerous spreadsheets, emailing other departments and informing people of inbounding workloads. When sales are completed, your client, services your client services teams should automatically be aware of new campaigns and prompted to engage with buyers, creative agencies and so on to produce and gather artwork. And when your campaigns are ready for posting, work orders should be automatically generated. Even better, those work orders should be synchronized to mobile devices of field operatives who install the printed media. That way, all the information at every step remains centralized so you can see exactly how each campaign is progressing. The results that this kind of system makes is pretty amazing. Now there's much less need for back and forth emails to move your projects along and automatically generating work orders, synchronizing pertinent information means less chance of human error causing problems. And you can save a lot of money on overheads. And you also get a lot of time back to put into other areas of your business. That brings us on to number two, upgrading and streamlining your sales process. Now this can apply to everyone, no matter what your business maturity. Everybody can take steps to improve their sales processes because while their demand for outdoor advertising is down right now, it is going to come back. We all know it will come back. And when it does, having a smart sales process will help you to capitalize on the demand much better than you could do otherwise. Of course, smart sales looks different depending on whether you're selling traditional or digital out of home but there's one really important common piece of advice for both. And yes, I'm talking about software again, 
but of course there's a very, very good reason to do so. There is a huge benefit to having a sales tool that gives you real-time visibility into what inventory you have available to sell at any time because the typical out-of-home sales routine just isn't good enough anymore. I'll give you an example. You receive an email from a buyer. Your salesperson has to go th digging through user unfriendly resources to see what's available. They then email the buyer back and discuss what's available, what the options are. They rinse and repeat this process a few times and they nail down a plan and then they have to manually write up an agreement. All of this is a lot of unnecessary and very manual work and it increases the likelihood of mistakes being made. And the very last thing that you want is to have to backtrack on a sale because you accidentally promised something that wasn't really available. Now, some sales tools like ours tie straight into the software you use to operate your network, which is perfect because it means that real time availability is already taken care of. You don't need to have any other system to do that for you. It's a really simple way of finding availability information, and it's far easier than digging through spreadsheets. And a bonus, good out of home sales solutions can automatically generate proposals for you after you select locations or screens inside of the tool. And then you don't have to spend more time manually collating data and putting together the proposal. The time that you save can be put towards selling more or nurturing your relationships or whatever your sales team wants and needs to focus on. So at the very least, real-time availability is a baseline, but your sales process can and should get much, much smarter than that. Now, you also need to be able to support the requests from your buyers and however they want to buy your inventory. And this can differ. Obviously, some want specific locations. Some buyers want to buy a number of impressions. Others want a share of voice or a loop frequency. And there are many other types of demands. But the more types of sale that you and your sales system can support, the better your chances of landing those great deals and of being able to easily accommodate them alongside your more regular sales. And so one last thing about upgrading your sales process. Again, it's, a, it's systems, it's software related. But anyway, I'm sure some of you are thinking, that's great, an out of home sales tool sounds fantastic, but I've built up my business around Salesforce or some other platform and you really don't want to give it up. And we believe you shouldn't have to. As, a, as I said before, it's about integrated platforms, integrated systems. So the chances are there's either a native CRM integration or an API that you can use to make sure that your preferred software plays nicely with the dedicated out of home sales tool. And so if there's software you love to work with or you're already heavily invested in, you can still continue to use it. But make sure that when you choose an out of home sales tool, it's great at handling the particulars of out of home and that it can connect with other software that you use. There are many options out there and picking a system with this cap capability is going to help you a lot. Again, I can't say it enough. If there's one thing my experience has taught me, it's that integrated solutions are far better than disconnected systems relying on manual rekeying of data. Number three, invest in understanding your audience. So for us here at Broadsign, we've been banging the drum about audience data for a very long time. And that's because we know just how valuable it is to out of home buyers and sellers alike. Understanding your impression counts and ideally the demographic information of your location's audience is critical. Having that kind of data is the best way to make sure that your inventory and sales are priced correctly. It also lets you do really cool targeted campaigns and dynamic campaigns too. For example, if you operate a particular niche or if audience changes throughout the day or in other situations. 
it's especially important to invest in this kind of capability if you want to sell programmatically on any of your screens now or in the future. And if programmatic buyers can't understand what audience they would reach by buying media with you, well, they're not going to do it. And a little bit more about programmatic later. So what's the best way to collect audience data? And here, you've got some options. Of course, you can approach audience data differently depending on which environments or sectors you operate in. By default, if there is a measurement bureau operating in the country where your network is located, well, that's going to be a great place to start. Companies like Geopath, Nielsen, Comb, Root, Move, etc., all do great work measuring foot traffic, auto traffic, demographics, and so on. And by working with them, you can get really good quality information fast. And that will let you price your inventory appropriately and sell digital campaigns by specific audiences. Then, when we have specific certain out of home environments or sectors, they may have more granular third party data. For example, cinemas having ticket sales data, shopping malls and retailers having footfall data, passenger data for transit companies, casinos using hotel booking information, and the list goes on and on and on. All of this information, all of this audience data can help inform your planning and sales decisions. Then we have digital tools. So when you have digital screens where people are going to be up close, you can use cameras and sensors along with analytics platforms such as Quiverdy. This gives really detailed information about who's passing your screens, what their dwell time is and so on. You can even have campaigns change creative based on the audience around your screen. Then there are other platforms that can measure auto traffic too, using cameras such as Admobilize, for example. And of course you can mix and match multiple, auto, multiple audience data sources. When you do that, you get a much clearer picture than you would with just one source of data. A lot of the big networks are doing, this, doing exactly this already, and it really is a differentiator for the out-of-home business when you can offer this. Just as a very quick side note on the topic of privacy, because when we talk about audience and when we talk about targeting, privacy is always something that comes up. And over in Europe, I know we have GDPR and we have all these regulations around the world. But one of the best things about audience data for our industry is that it's all anonymized. So it's not at all like online where individual people feel that they're being targeted with individual ads. They probably aren't, but they feel that way. For out of home, when buyers are purchasing targeted out of home campaigns, what they're really doing is they're buying based on trends in fairly broad audience behaviors. It may be based on historical data or maybe same day data, depending on how your network collects and uses the information. So you don't get the same level of creepiness that makes people recoil from online advertising. And we can talk about ad blockers and we can talk about um, opting out of, of, uh, of ad, ad exposure and so on. But out of home, you really don't have any of that. All of this is huge for buyers because the buyers want to benefit from targeting and targeted campaigns without any negative associations. Out of home lets them do that really, really well. So if you want to get involved and you want your buyers to connect with your audiences in a meaningful but not intrusive way, getting good audience data and a mix of good audience data is essential for your network whatever specific out of home space you happen to work in. On to number four, <clears throat> proof of posting and proof of play. So the previous items lead very nicely into this next area where I think out of home businesses need to modernize. And it's POP. So we can, we can shorten proof of posting, proof of play to POP. It feels like a very, very long time ago when I was at JC Deco, when POP became the next big, next big thing, 
There were announcements across the industry about how we were going to deliver POP. Uh, but honestly, as an industry, we've not really advanced very much. And that's probably a good 10 to 15 years that we've been talking about POP. Some companies do it. Some companies haven't even started thinking about it. And again, it differs depending on whether you're talking about traditional or digital out of home. But before we come to that, why is it so important? Well, in some cases, buyers are now accustomed to having that data on demand. I'm sure any media owner out there has been uh, contacted by buyers who are demanding out of home um, proof of play, proof of performance, proof of posting. And it's really important that you as out of home businesses are able to meet the demand. By doing so, it improves the trust and the transparency, not only between you and your buyer, but of the industry as a whole. And that can also help you and your buyers plan your future campaigns. So for proof of posting in a traditional out of home setting, your buyers need to know that the campaign they bought, they bought was posted to the right places at the right time. And we think the best solution for this is to use a specialist mobile app that's tied directly into your out of home business software. For example, after posting, the field operative would take a photograph that that photograph gets synced back to your out of home platform. And you can then immediately share that information and the photograph with your customer. Then they know precisely that they're getting what they paid for. And it's a pretty easy solution. So there's no reason really why you shouldn't adopt it. After all, it's a thing that buyers like. And even better, as I mentioned, it's still not that common of a thing for out of home businesses to do. So by offering this information, it's a great way for you to make your business stand out. And if that's not good enough, you can gain significant savings in the amount of administrative time, effort and cost involved in gathering this information. Now, when we come to talk about digital and proof of play, it does happen to be a bit more common already within the digital out of home space. So it's even more of a must have. The better digital out of home solutions can generate reports for you where and when campaigns have played and how many impressions have been delivered. But not all proof of play is equal. If we're talking about the validity of data in out of home space, it remains a sticking point for some digital buyers. And the more buyers that come into out of home from online, where they may have been used to buying one on one impressions online, they can have a hard time trusting the validity of one to many impressions that are delivered by digital out of home. So if you want to keep everyone happy, you need to make sure that your digital proof of play is really, really accurate. So much so that at Broadsign, we went to the extent of having our proof of play independently certified. That's how strongly we feel about having accurate information is for the trustworthiness of our industry. And when you have that kind of accurate data, it's another selling point for you. You get to show your buyers that you're delivering exactly what was agreed, which is great for building lasting relationships. Okay, number five. Adopt a platform that supports programmatic or at least digital. Now, for some of you, this might seem like a large leap, depending on what your current business consists of and the maturity of your business. However, we think you should invest in a platform that does support programmatic transactions. And there's a very good reason to do so, even if your business today is only traditional or transit media. So coming back to numbers <clears throat> and numbers based on the before times, before coronavirus, lockdown, etc. Most of the growth was on the digital side of the business and digital was expected to grow at an annual rate of about 12.6% annually 
from 2017 through 2023. Currently, digital accounts for about a third of all out-of-home media sales worldwide, even though there are way fewer digital displays than static, static displays currently. So basically, digital is the growth space in out-of-home. So it's where most of the money is going to be made going forwards. So to take your business to the next level and create a truly modern, successful out-of-home business, investing in digital out-of-home, if you haven't already, is one key thing that you can do. And now everyone out there, whether in digital already, or if you're thinking about it for the future, no doubt you would have heard about programmatic and maybe it didn't seem the right idea or the right time before. And maybe you don't see yourself getting into programmatic anytime soon, which of course is fine, but you don't want to be locked into a platform today that won't allow you to grow tomorrow. The bigger that your business gets and the more complicated the integrations you establish with the tools and services you need to run your business, the harder it's going to be to make the move in future when you are finally ready to jump into the programmatic game. So this is really a recommendation to future-proof your business. If you're not in digital yet, it is time to start thinking about going digital and to find the right platform that's going to help you grow your digital business. And then, regardless of whether you're already in digital or planning to do so, you should think about the solution that has what it takes to succeed with programmatic transactions. So here's a little bit of a secret. Um, at Broadsign, we are hearing lots from buyers who are interested in using this downtime to learn how to get into programmatic out-of-home buying. And we're also hearing from lots of media owners who are interested in learning how to prepare their networks to take advantage of that acceleration of interest in programmatic campaigns. So we firmly believe that the entire dynamic around programmatic is going to change dramatically as the industry, uh, as the industry recovers. And you certainly don't want to be left behind. On that note, and as a little teaser, the process of adding digital to traditional out of home business is going to be covered in a webinar that's coming up in June. So make sure to look out for that. There are details on the screen at the moment, and again, we'll repeat them at the end. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to finish with a couple of other items, which are a little bit different, but I think they're really, really important for a modern, successful out-of-home business. And they may sound a little obvious, so apologies if they do. Number six, it might sound really stupidly obvious. Make sure your locations look great. Now, obviously online web ads, only really it's the content that matters. But in the out of home world, they exist in the physical world. It's not just about the content and the creative. The look of your billboards and your screens really matters and impacts on the aesthetics of the surroundings. Personally, in my experience, there's a billboard a backlit billboard about 200 meters from where I live. And I think at least a half, if not two thirds of the fluorescent tubes have been broken for well over a year. And it just looks atrocious. I'm not going to name and shame anyone, but I have to say that it's really, really disengaging. And as someone in the out of home industry, it's really disappointing to see. Apart from myself, the wider audiences are not going to connect with the creative if the infrastructure looks run down or outdated. On a bigger scale, municipalities and landowners want their environments to look nice too. They're giving great consideration to urban landscapes and architects are now including advertising more and more in their plans for buildings and open spaces and so on. So these will be far more willing and open to expanding the relationship with an out of home operator who makes sure that their locations and their infrastructure 
looks really, really good. And so there are two things you can do really to get the fundamentals right. I've already touched upon the area of lighting. So you need to make sure that you light your media properly. Your lighting should be evenly spread for the best detail and color. You can also look at things like backlights or putting uh, spotlights on the bottom of the frame if it's a large billboard, if possible. These help to prevent shadows when the sun's overhead. It's also important to choose lights with the right color temperature. So pure white or the blue end of the spectrum give the best colors and maximize visibility of the creative. Whereas warmer red or yellow lights are not as good for color or detail. You can also use lighting very well to do interesting things. I'm sure many of you out there will have seen the recent Dracula creative for the BBC that went viral. Um, it was designed, if you haven't seen it, it was designed to use a specific spotlight cast across wooden stakes attached to the billboard. And after dark, it would create the shadow in the shape of Dracula's face in profile so that the creative, like the man himself, came alive after dark. It was a fantastic example. Obviously, we can't do this all the time on every billboard, but it just goes to show the types of effects you can easily achieve with well-lit billboards. Aside from the lighting, you can sort out the frames. Obviously, things like steel and other metals look most modern and professional, and they can be the best option if you have the budget. But obviously metal can run quite expensive. It can be twice the cost of wood easily. So if the numbers don't work, or if your locations don't really demand the quality of that, that type of frame, it's fine. But make sure that the wood that you use is in good condition. Make sure it's repaired. Make sure it's repainted. I'm sure we've all seen terrible examples of billboards that are in disrepair. And they inside the industry and to people outside the industry. They are just very, very off-putting from the advertiser. What's really important is whatever you use, it looks good. Indoors, you can use durable plastics as a good cheaper alternative to metal. And of course, you need to go with whatever your budget and the location demands. Then we can come on to digital. So when you talk about digital, a screen is not a screen is not a screen. They are not all equal. Old and low quality displays are very noticeable and make a bad impression on your audience. And there's a few details you can keep in mind. For the frames themselves, go with things like a thinner metal bezel. These will stand out in the best way and they are what most of the better modern screens look like. When you're talking about large LED billboards, um, you should make sure that the LED modules are correctly calibrated and that all, mad, all modules are working. There's nothing worse than seeing a fantastic big roadside LED screen with a few modules which are out of calibration or not working at all. Also, when we're talking about digital, we have to think about the visibility because they may be seen from quite wide angles. And again, this might seem obvious, but I'll never know. And so visibility is not really a big issue with most of the commercial displays or OLED screens that are available today. But if you're choosing something like an LCD or an LED TV, you should make sure and pick something with an IPS panel, which is better for higher display quality, better colors and better viewing angles. And then of course, there are things you can do going beyond just placing a screen on a wall. You can think about things like video walls, and they don't all have to be just rectangular. You can achieve some quite fantastic displays by offsetting them and, and uh, arranging them in different configurations. You can find ways to, to combine traditional and digital in multiples so they can work together. And using these types of things are fantastic once you've got the fundamentals down. All right, so we're on the home stretch. Number seven, <clears throat> invest in sustainability. Again, it might sound a little obvious, but historically, sustainability has been a huge problem in our industry. Printed ads 
use a hell of a lot of material. And there's carbon emissions from driving around, posting and maintaining all of these billboard locations and bus shelter and street furniture locations. The carbon footprint of the electricity used to power the lighting and power the digital displays is huge. So we need to look at sustainability as an industry. Not only that, buyers want us to be sustainable. And why? Because the consumers want brands to be sustainable or at least help them feel more sustainable. And that's going to influence who the buyers do their business with. It's just gonna be better for you to be able to say that you do business in a sustainable way. And even if for nothing else other than the optics, you can really capitalize on being sustainable. But what does it mean? Where can you start? So there are some fantastic examples and you can find them really easily. You can donate your old billboards to charities or local businesses that can repurpose the polyvinyl. There are Pinterest boards showing what people have done to reuse the PVC. And I saw a, an article last year where there's an organization turning them into temporary shelters for refugees in Sudan. And I'm sure that is just one example. You can switch over to recyclable polyethylene billboards instead. From lighting perspective, you can switch to LED, which apart from using less electricity, they tend to last longer. And so that's going to reduce your maintenance costs as well. And then you can consider things like solar panels to meet some of your energy demands. And if you're upgrading a fleet of vehicles, you can choose hybrid and electric. And obviously they're getting better and better and you get really, really good range for the price these days. So there's a lot of things you can do on the traditional side. And then with digital out of home, you can do things a little different too. While your media gets delivered automatically and you won't need to use material to post your messages, what can you do? You can do things like adjust the lighting, uh, the brightness and the contrast, making sure your screens are switched off when locations are closed. You can invest in hardware that you know is going to last. Obviously here, electronic waste is a big problem. So you can do your best to minimize yours. You can also invest in tools for remote, remote management of your screens and, and the computers connected to your screens. And that way it cuts down on trips for maintenance purposes. And again, if you have the option, globally, power your business with sustainable energy sources. Seek out those uh, providers who are, who are greener. There are financial benefits to be made. Uh, there are financial benefits from this. And you can consider this time to examine some of your policies, perhaps, for remote working and business travel. At the moment, there's all, almost zero business travel. So when we go, if we can operate with zero business travel when we go back to normal, Maybe we don't need as much as we used to, used to have in the past. You can make some permanent changes that are going to help you over the long term. Again, it's about not settling for the same as it used to be. We need to be better. Improving your sustainability can help you cut your costs. And there was a report from the Business and Sustainable Development Commission that estimated businesses worldwide could eventually save trillions of dollars by making themselves more sustainable. So if it makes your buyers happy, if it makes the audiences happy, and if it saves, your, if it saves you money in the long run, why would you not do it? Okay, so in summary, we're at the end. The seven key steps to modernize your out of home business that we've identified and I've talked about today, just as a recap, Number one, get your delivery activities in sync. Upgrade and streamline your sales process. Invest in understanding your audience. Get a good solution for POP. Adopt a platform that supports programmatic and at least digital. Make your locations look great. And lastly, invest in sustainability. Now it's very easy to say, and we all know that we're going through difficult times. And a lot of these items require investment. And we know if you can't make changes today, at the very least, you can take this opportunity to think about 
and to plan and to be ready for growth.